All right, here, let's take a look at the bouncy ball demo. I'm a little bit in front of the word demo, but there it is. So this is part of the mini MVCS course. This is a Unity architecture course that's available for purchase. And all the code we're showing here, including the full code for the course, is freely available on GitHub. So you can take a look at that, the link below. This course is about you doing architecture inside Unity, the model, view, and controller. In it, we'll cover the course introduction. We'll talk about Unity. We'll look at software design. Let's take a look at the next slide to go even deeper. In software design, we look at design principles. We look at design patterns. What are those things? We look at ways to diagram our designs with UML. We look at all the different architectural options for Unity, and then we land on Mini MVCS, which is a custom free architecture as the leading solution. Then there's four different sample projects included in the course, but today we're going over even more demos besides those. I think I've added 10 more. So we're gonna go over the bouncy ball demo here. So let's take a look at that. So here I am in the sample project. If you've gotten the sample project here, the mini MVCS and follow the instructions from the Git repo, then come into the samples here and just import those samples. Now I've already done that for us here. We can see the samples and we can see here in the more folder, there is the bouncy ball mini. So let's look at those. And here's the demo. So let's just run the demo just to start. It's a little bit of audio playing. I'm not sure if you can hear that. But all it's doing is using Unity physics to bounce a ball on a surface, and then it updates the UI. Now, it's, there's no interactivity in this demo. Actually, I think I can hit spacebar if I remember. No. no, there's no interactivity. So all it does here is run on its own and use some physics so you could take a look at how that physics interacts. And you can see that the UI is getting updated there. So let's take a look at how this is structured. So here in the scene, we've got a world game object that just hides the camera and light, which are not too interesting. Then we have the bouncy ball view, which has all the graphics that we see there and also the UI. So let's just look at the UI elements. It's got the title and status there. So this is, the view contains everything we see visually and the view also plays the audio. Now I'm not sure in the recording if you could hear the audio, but it's just going bounce, bounce, bounce and playing a little noise there. So that's it for there. Now let's take a look at the example itself. So this is a mono behavior called the bouncy ball mini example. And all I do is drag in the view as the only reference that it needs to take here. And then this is off and ready to go. So let's look at the source code here. We'll zoom out a little bit here. So here's the example. The example is going to take the view in as a serialized field. Then it is going to just start in the start here. It's going to create a new bouncing, bouncy ball mini and pass in the view. So mini here in this terminology is the wrapper for the entire app. So anytime you see mini in the source code, it's meant to be the most parent structure. And inside of it, it has several elements, including the view. Let's take a look at that next. So opening up the view, the view is going to extend. I'm sorry, I'm opening up the mini to start with. So in the mini, I take the view element. It also has an audio controller there. And here's what we do inside the mini initialize. We're gonna create a context, a model, controller, service. And it's going to wire them all together here in this one line. So anytime you see the controller getting initialized, in the mini world, the controller is the most, let's say, most knowledgeable concern in the whole system. So the mini itself has four parts inside. One of those parts is the controller, and the controller is the, the most knowledgeable part. So it takes in a reference to the other three concerns, and it's what will say, hey, data model, what's your value? Hey, view, did anybody interact with you? Hey, service, can you load something for me? It's the controller that's gonna glue all that together. So let's look at the model quickly. 
The model is going to hold values for how many times have we counted up and what is the maximum. So it's going to say one of three, two of three, and then when it reaches three of three, it's going to reset itself. One of three, two of three. So that's how those two values work there. Here, notice that they're both set to zero. So we'll take a look at what sets the max to three in a moment. Now let's look at the service. So the service layer is what is meant to call any external data. If your game does not need any external data from the beginning or ever, you can omit this step. You don't need to have a service. But typically today's games call backend services, local files that are external to the game itself, like we see here. And uh, this service concept is a great one for that. So here, all it's going to do is it's going to load a local text file and then parse that value into the bound, bounce count max. So let's look at this text file. It's here in resources, texts. If I open it up, it starts with the value three. So it seems a little silly here that you would have a value. Why not just hard code three in C sharp? This is just an ar ar arbitrary demo to show, let's put some data outside the app and go load it. I could have also loaded this from the back end, uh, for example. So that's it for the service. It's just going to go load that value three and pass it back to the controller. Now let's look at the controller. This is the last thing that we need to look at. In the controller here, we inherit from base controller. As the comment says here, let me move out of the way. Always base is optional to extend. It's just going to give you some free functionality. But you can begin to see through these examples how few lines of code there are to get this architecture set up. Well, I say that also someone looking at this example could say, hey, I could bounce a ball with one mono behavior. Why do I need these other classes? But the, again, the example here is you were learning fundamentals in a very simple use case. Now imagine growing your project up to the size of Fortnite managing multiplayer, metagame, each of the players, all of the things you can do with your player. We would have thousands of classes and uh, tens of thousands of lines of code. Having this best practices divided into model, view, controller, and service really pays dividends on your projects. That's why we're starting so simple. So it's a common concern when people are getting into learning architectures. It feels like, hey, that's a lot of classes or a lot of lines of code to get simple things done. It's true, but you're paying uh, in some investment time now to learn these fundamentals. So as your project scale, you're set, right? It's a wonderful thing that three months into a solo project or two weeks into a five person project, there is not a question of where the next feature should go because you guys are all working together on the same architectural pattern. And you know, hey, a button click, well, that's gonna start in the view and that's gonna then go to the controller and then go to the model. You're speaking the same language. So the, the Udemy course talks about the benefits and the cost benefit analysis of bringing on new tech like this, mini MVCS. So back to the controller here. What we do is we initialize the view with some text fields. We go listen to that service here and then whenever the service loads, we take that value we loaded from the text field and we pass it to the model. Then we listen to the view and we say, hey, view, anytime the physics detects the ball has bounced, then let's capture that here. And we'll update that uh, listening anytime that the bounce count has changed here. So there's a little bit more to look at here. You can dig in. We also have a little bit of the uh, command pattern, which we'll look at in, in a future example. So let's run the demo one more time. Yeah, I can see that the mic is picking up the bouncing. So it just goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's it for the count up demo.